Okay, so it's time for us to move into neutral geometry. And neutral geometry should be neutral, but neutral with respect to what? Well, with respect to Euclid's parallel postulate. You see, the thing that makes geometry weird in some respects, uh, let's suppose you have a line and a point not on the line. These are three different renditions of a line and a point not on the line. Euclid's parallel postulate says that through this point, parallel to this line, you can draw one line. This is Euclid's, oh golly, Euclid's parallel postulate. This is what you studied in high school. This geometry you studied in high school. Uh, you are amazed that there are two other renditions here. Well, there's the elliptic parallel postulate. In the elliptic parallel postulate, there are no parallel lines. Every two lines meet. It is not possible to have parallel lines in this geometry. There are surfaces where this is true, where the elliptic parallel postulate holds. Likewise, there is the parallel postulate that says, sure, you got this parallel, but you've also got this parallel, and you've got this parallel, and you've got a whole bunch of parallels. This is called the hyperbolic parallel postulate. What we are going to build is a neutral geometry, and that neutral geometry does not take a particular position on the parallel postulates. Okay, so that's what we mean when we talk about neutral geometry. Uh, there are lots of ways to build neutral geometry. Your author offers six axioms. Uh, I have seen neutral geometry built with dozens of axioms. The 1960s school math study group is notorious for having all sorts of axioms that overlap, uh, but we are going to use only six to build our geometry. Uh, every geometry begins with some undefined terms. Undefined terms means we're not going to try to describe them because we're pretty sure you know what they are. Uh, we're pretty sure whatever you think point is, that's fine. Whatever you think line is, that's fine. Uh, whatever you think distance is, that's fine. Uh, whatever you think a half plane is, that's fine. So think big giant table that extends infinitely in, in two directions. A uh, half of that is a half plane. Uh, we don't define angle measure. We postulate some things involving angle measure, but we don't talk about what it means to be one degree. We don't talk about that. Uh, and then we don't talk about what we mean by area. We describe a number called area, and we have properties involving area, but we don't define that term. So all of these, whatever your understanding is coming to our geometry course, you're fine. You're fine. And so without further ado, we begin building the geometry. The first axiom that your author refers to is called the existence axiom. It's axiom one. It says the collection of all points forms a non-empty set. There is more than one point in that set. Um, why do we require there to be more than one point? Well, if we don't require that, then this could be everything there is. Uh, the other five axioms would still hold if this was the only geo the only point in the geometry. We require there to be more than one point in the set. Um, I will also point out that we use the word set on purpose. Your author uses set on purpose because your author wants us building using set theoretic language. Uh, we get to borrow some ideas from the set theory that you're familiar with from Math 239. Okay? Okay. Axiom 2. 
Axiom 2 says, it's called the incidence axiom, it says that every line is a set of points, and for every pair of distinct points A and B, there is exactly one line L such that A and B are both on L. Uh, so both on L. So we get to borrow from set theory. Uh, we will say that A is an element of L. We will say that B is an element of L because L is a set of points. So we can use elemental language. We can use subset language, uh, the things that we know from, from set theory. What does this say? This says basically the two points determine a unique line. That matters. Two points determine a unique line. This should sound familiar from our work with incidence geometry. Neutral geometry is an incidence geometry. Okay, so these two things get the ball rolling. We now know that there are at least two points in the geometry, and we know that that line, that, that those two points determine a unique line. So there's at least, there's at least another line in the geometry. There's at least one line in neutral geometry. Okay? Okay. So axiom three is the big one. That comes up in the next video. There you go.